In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process that I used for creating this wire honeycomb pattern. This honeycomb pattern is a great way to add some detailing to the back of your pieces or fill in some negative space. If you'd like to see more variations on this pattern, or possibly some more advanced techniques for stone setting using this pattern, let me know in the comments below. The materials that I've set aside for this project are four 4 inch segments of 21 gauge square and 3 feet of 28 gauge round. Before I begin the pattern, I'm going to go ahead and put a mark on my squares just so I have an even starting place when starting the honeycomb pattern. The pliers that I'm using for this project are flat and about 3 millimeters wide at the tips of the jaws. I'm going to use the pliers to measure each length of the honeycomb. Let's go ahead and dive in and I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to start by gripping my square wire at the mark that we made with our marker and go ahead and bend out one direction. As I'm working, the angles that I'm looking for should be the approximate angles I need in order to form the hexagons. This is an additional tool that I picked up in the drafting section of my local hobby store. These perfect hexagons are exactly what I need if I want to be extra precise. I can make sure that my angles match perfectly. My next move will be to pinch that wire, flush in my pliers, and bend the next angle into our wire. If I want to go back and check, I can make sure that it's sitting approximately like so. Each time that I'm bending, I'm bending, holding just the tip of the wire in my pliers, so each length will be approximately the same length. I'm going to go ahead and bend again. Then when I'm ready to do the next one, I can just rotate, putting my plier into that corner there. So I have the first half hexagon. I'm going to repeat this same pattern until I have four individual half hexes coming out of the straight line from the bottom. Each time I pinch just the corner there in the tips of my plier and work my way down the wire. Once I have all of the kinks that I'm looking for, in my case I have four individual half hexes across the straight parallel line of where our wire begins, I'm going to go back and just gently put pressure on each join. This should help straighten out my pattern.
now that I have the first wire ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same process for my other remaining three square wires. Once I have all four of my wires bent to the pattern, I can begin weaving it together. I'm going to start by taking two of my squares and aligning them next to each other so that you can begin to see how the hexagons will form. I'll then take my 28. I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it three times around the base. I'm going to slide that join all the way up so that it is at the base of my hexagon and flatten it to ensure those wires are sitting properly together. I'm next going to take another of my square wires here and I'm going to bring my 28 along the angle of our bottom hex and wrap it around the join of our next hex in the pattern. I've wrapped eight times around that join in the hexes. Going forward, for every hex that I join together, I want to make sure that I have eight rotations. That way the pattern will be even. We're going to go ahead and connect our last remaining square in the same process, taking our 28 along parallel to the bottom angle of our hex and wrapping eight times around the center join. If I was going to make my pattern wider from here, I would continue the same process that we've used thus far to connect our next square wire in the pattern to our next join. Since this is the end of where my pattern will be, I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it around eight times. Here I can cut our 28 off and begin the next set of connections. I'm going to go ahead and just jump down to the bottom and connect our hexes here on the bottom right. By wrapping around both of them three times, how, just how we started our first two wires. and sliding that join all the way up to the base of my hex, where I can then 
wrap it eight times around my rightmost wire. I went ahead and wrapped it around my rightmost wire so I can go ahead and cut it short so I can continue to use the same piece of 28 for our next set of joinings. For these, we're going to go back to our leftmost at the bottom here, wrapping our 28 around, joining these together eight times. Once I have that section connected, I can go ahead and move diagonally to the next section. I'm going to repeat the same method of diagonal connections until I have all of the individual hexes connected together. Once I've woven all of the individual connections together, I can flip it over to see from the other side. All of my crossovers from my 28 gauge should be hidden behind one of my squares, and it looks nice and neat. Before incorporating this into a piece, I can go back and trim all of my individual 28 gauges uh, short and make sure that they're pinched flush to the piece. My finished pattern should look something like this. A special thank you goes out to all the names on your screen for supporting this channel through Patreon. What I'm doing would not be possible without their support. If you're interested in helping support the channel, follow the link in the description below this video. If you found this video helpful, leave me a like on the video. This helps me a lot with the visibility of my videos in YouTube's algorithms. To be the first to know when I upload new content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when new videos are available.
Thank you for watching and happy wrapping.